bonjour à tout le monde. Uh, thank you very much for having invited me and having given me the opportunity to participate in this meeting. And uh, as far as I can, I, I, as I could see from participating in it, it has been extremely interesting and I hope uh, my contribution won't be too disappointing to you. So I'll try to share my, my screen. I hope it works. So can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, it shows okay. perfectly well. Thank you very much. So, um, so my proposal has to do with the, the work we have been done, been doing uh, with the, the Operas Consortium and particularly with um, operas, the Operas P project and the Triple project, uh, because in both of them, the question dealing with multilingualism in social science and humanities has been um, an important issue for us. So uh, the, the, the questions I would like to address have to do with the results that we, re that we, we got from the, I mean, the work that we had been doing mainly during the past two years respecting this subject. And in fact, it has just been published, the, um, the white paper that we produced um, this year, which co complements uh, one which we, had, we, we produced uh, three years ago in 2018. So um, I will start with uh, a global presentation of um, what we, we, we have done. And um, uh, an important part of this work that is being developed on multilingualism as uh, is connected with a special interest group. I mean, the Operas Consortium has several uh, um, special interest groups and one of multilingualism, I mean, has collaborated with these two projects. So just just a, a, a quick overview. I mean, we had a, a crowdfunding campaign uh, curiously in several languages. It was a way of testing. I mean, the way the, the use of multilingualism in, the, in this context. Um, what we, we one of the future projects I will speak a little bit about it about this about this is to develop a new translation service connected with operas and especially to enhance to facilitate the publication in several languages. Of course, during this time we had the opportunity to have scholarly debate to monitor practices and stimulate discussion around this and on this topic and some of the results will be present presented here. Um, also, uh, we are worried about the, I mean, the, the boosting the endowment of national languages and uh, the future, I mean, for the next years, we will be uh, deeply committed to the idea of developing or implementing the national nodes at operas. And of course, uh, national or local languages will be important in, in this process. So not using English as a communication language, but also using uh, our own uh, uh, mother languages or tongues. Then uh, also um, an important thing that was done, in fact, is being uh, presented right now, yesterday, today and tomorrow as a, a main input from the Triple project is the Go Triple Discovery uh, uh, platform. Uh, one of the things that uh, characterizes it is that it is a, a fully multilingual discovery platform, which means that we can make research in eight different languages. I mean, those languages with which we started. And of course, we use English as, 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 as the common um, language, but of course, we can use as well and make uh, research using simply terms in, uh, in other languages. I mean, like Italian, Polish, Portuguese, or I mean, the, uh, the eight languages that are being used in it. And of course, we also made several workshops during this period in order to make some contribution to the idea of multilingualism and bibliodiversity. So multilingualism is um, an aspect or uh, an expression of, of bibliodiversity, of diversity that we would like to keep in scholarly communication. And that's why it, it is so important for us, and especially in the area of social science and humanities. Uh, in what respects the main findings, we started this process two years ago with the literature review. So we reviewed, I mean, the publications that dealt with uh, multilingualism and problems dealing with this and that we were able to define a categorization, a categorization of, the corp, of, of the corpus and the um, structure for different categories that were used in this, uh, in this uh, review. 
the research relevance, which is important. I mean, the language we use is not, of course, uh, it may affect the research relevance of what we do, uh, as, as in fact has been said as well and stated very well by Bjorn in the previous uh, presentation. The content curation, uh, of course, should we keep only using one language or would be national language important for the content curation? The reputation, which of course clearly related to the research relevance as well. And then what we would like to propose is uh, a balanced multilingualism in, in scholarly communication. Of course, this uh, allows us to keep using English as, as a communication language, as uh, of course we are doing now, but being able as well to keep national languages as fully scientific languages. Uh, you have here the details of the of the publication that resulted from this uh, uh, fr from this um, uh, this review, and of course you have the data there and the, the information. Uh, now, in what respects uh, the literature review uh, the, the research relevance? Of course, English is extremely important for us to have a common patterns and so on and be able to use them. But it was also very clear from the literature review that. Uh, uh, multilingualism, in fact, can make a very important contribution in order to promote inclusiveness and equity among researchers. And if we use only one English that for many of us, or perhaps most of us, is, is a foreign language, of course, we won't feel uh, completely or entirely integrated and equitable in having access to the way of to the, to the communication, scholarly communication. The same can be said about content curation. Of course, um, especially in the areas in, uh, of humanities and social sciences, uh, in, in which, um, I mean, there, there is a lot of information that is uh, presented or, or primary sources that are in national languages. If we use only English metadata to describe them, it, I mean, it will be not uh, as efficient as is, it could be by using as well the language in which, the national language in which they were produced. So. For content curation, it would be important to keep to keep this uh, this multilingualism as something crucial and very sensitive for 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 the, what we like to do. Uh, then, in what respects reputation? Reputation is, is clearly a key question in all this because why should we publish in English? Uh, we do this because we want to have more visibility, more impact in what we do, and of course, this will affect. The, the reputation of a researcher, of a, an institution, and the way it is, it is um, ranked, I mean, in, 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 the, in the several rankings that, that, that are being done. But it is also fact that, the fact that there's a lot of work that is being published either in monographs or in journals in local languages. And it is also a fact that even when they are indexed, for example, in Scopus, and uh, and the web of science. I mean, just to mention the most, to the two most used uh, indexes. Uh, it is also a fact that even if they are not highly ranked in the sense of having uh, a greater impact and so on, they deal with realities that no other other journal uh, may deal with. And for example, when you for, you have a journal that deals with something that we consider to be local and so on. But if this journal does not do this, and probably in the local language as well, no other uh, will do it. So, of course, we all like to publish an international journal or something of a certain discipline, which is completely correct. But not to forget that there's a lot of, of, of other things that won't be able to be uh, treated there and should be in, uh, differently. I mean, uh, and precisely in promoting as well this idea of uh, local languages. So how can we combine those different uh, things and those different perspectives? By promoting a kind of balance, the multilingualism in scholarly communication. When we can use as well, I mean, local languages, <clears throat> we can of course use English as lingua franca to reach a wider uh, audience, but also to be able to translate not only into English from our own language into English, but also to, into other languages as well. It depends on the, on, on the way the, the scientific community is aggregated, the interests we have according to disciplines. So there are other ways of increasing visibility of work by using a strategy that is uh, uh, based on multilingualism. 
So in what respect is literature review? review this, this, these were the most important uh, aspects. Then we made a complementary survey, which was open for several, several uh, weeks um, uh, last, last, last year. And then, <clears throat> of course, we wanted to uh, deepen the, 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 the understanding of, of those uh, questions. And what we, we, we saw is that there is a strong openness among researchers, translators, and publishers. These, these were, I mean, the, the people we would like to enroll in the survey. And it's interesting to say as well that researchers may as well be translators themselves. This happens a lot in, 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 in humanities, mainly in social science as well. And may also act as publishers, mainly as academic, academic publishers. So sometimes we have the three profiles converging in the same person, sometimes only two, and at times, of course, only the, the research profile. But it was, they were extremely receptive, receptive to viewing the idea of, uh, of the amplification of knowledge that can be provided by multilingualism and by promoting interculturality and equity as already was already said. Also, the idea of having a collaborative system, which is important for us in the idea that we'd like to develop of this translation platform, could mitigate the risks <clears throat> that we face in dealing with the need to translate, for example, the consumption of time, I mean, the, the price of translation and the flaws that can be attached to a not, uh, uh, to a not very good translation. So the, by uh, enhancing a collaborative system, this could be, in fact, prevented and uh, uh, promote as well expertise in, in certain scientific areas. And so uh, we, we think, and I mean, the surveys uh, clearly have sh has shown that the usage of different languages can, in fact, enrich and boost international co collabor collaboration and the visibility of the research that is being done. So uh, now I pass to the main challenge is that in a certain way uh, derived from this uh, from those uh, the literature review and the and the survey that was done. So the biggest challenge in a certain way is to boost uh, a strategy of balanced multilingualism. So in which we agree that we need a lingua franca. It just has always been the case in the past. I mean. I work with classical philology, so I'm used to it because first we use the, the ancient Greek. Uh, for example, the New Testament is, is written in the ancient Greek because it was the communicational language. And for more than 1,000 years, we use Latin for the same purpose. And I mean, uh, more recently, it's English that we use for this. So we always need uh, a, a language that works as a lingua franca, as a, lingua, a language of communication among, among all. But the use of uh, the advantages of using a lingua franca do not imply and must not imply the risk of turning it into a lingua unica. This meaning the the sole language that can be used. And if you don't use this language, you you won't exist as a scholar and so on. And this is what this is the main the, the main idea. So how how can we find innovative solutions in order to to complement this balanced multilingualism? And saying lingua franca is needed, but a lingua franca is not a lingua unica, is not the sole language that we can use. So um, what we'd like to do and test uh, in, in the OPERS consortium would be to develop a community-based translation platform. Uh, I'm not saying that we'd like to develop, for example, e-translation and machine translation or automatic translation, because this demands a lot in terms of, of of resources, human resources, and the resources of other kind, and those tools are already available. So, what can be uh, our um, contribution to this, our um, our best input? And we think that would be to aggregate, I mean, um, people, researchers uh, around uh, areas of expertise and enrolling them di directly in the process of uh, supporting translation from other colleagues and having their support. In the in, in in the process of making ourselves the the, the translation, so it would be uh, the collaborative work of researchers, translators, and publishers. So, so to put them together to f help them to find the best publisher. For example, if I want to publish from my own language into a different language, uh, and and vice versa as well, 
And by doing this, creating conditions for cooperation, sharing tools, experiences, methodologies. So in a certain way, what we'd like to, to say is to put the human factor on the work that is being done by the machine. And that can, and of course, would make the difference in the results, particularly in the area of social science and humanities. So the platform should be conceived as a social infrastructure to federate technical knowledge and scholarly expertise. And of course, to be tested and improved by a broad users community because it is owned by the community, can be used by it and improved by the community as well. So, uh, I mean, to have a different, uh, I mean, uh, perspective on the on the workflow, what we want to to keep and is important to keep is diversity also at at, at the linguistic at, at language level. So we can keep both things. I mean, the, the lingua franc and, and and the other language working together by this community based approach. By the I mean, basing it on. Uh, on the, the ability to federate technical tools and scholarly expertise. And of course, by doing this, helping what is considered usually national to become international. This is possible, we think, and we don't care, we don't have to give up of our own languages in order to reach uh, this uh, reality. So I move now to some uh, global recommend recommendations that we would like, uh, of course, ourselves to take into consideration and that have be taken as a whole uh, so that we can uh, in a certain way uh, I mean uh, reach this goal of course uh, an important rec recommendation has to do with founders and research performing organizations because uh, if uh, multilingualism is not valued I mean in career recognition in, in I mean in in the, in the reward systems and um, and the, the, the stimulations we have of course uh, especially a young scholar won't be uh, won't be motivated to to publish in a, a different language other than English because uh, funders and research forming organizations in the end won't support I mean uh, research that is not in English or won't take it into consideration in their evaluation. So it's extremely important that I mean those are they are I mean receptive to the idea of the advantages of using. Uh, multilingualism. The same is valid to the policymakers in order to perceive and value multilingualism as a strong manifestation of bibliodiversity and particularly in this area of humanities and social science because we know we deal with local realities I mean many times we also deal with the issues that have to do with our own culture our own language and the when we try to put all this richness in a different language, it's not always easy. It's it's it quite often we lose something in the process and it, it we weaken I mean the, the the argument. So the ability to keep multilingualism is of course something that is important. For this, we have to try to work with scholars at large because the idea is to uh, involve scholars in this process of reciprocity. For example. If I'm a Portuguese, if a colleague from a, a, another country wants to publish something in Portuguese, which also which happens quite often, I could be able to, I mean, to give my my support in revising not only the translation but the content. Then that is something that we could do. I mean, to connect the idea of revising, helping the the, the translation with, I mean, something that has to do with the the reviewing process uh, in itself, and of course to. I mean, put this or to understand this in the in the uh, within a principle of reciprocity. I do this, and I can expect this from another colleague that would be would do the same for uh, a different language. Of course, uh, also to work with publishers, publishers that would like to, I mean, to to make available p works that they have published in in a certain language and would like to have it published in a different lang language in a way to promote, I mean, the authors they have and the way they work. But also the opposite, that would be ready to receive, to publish works that were initially published in a different language. Of course, we know that uh, when dealing, for example, with uh, articles in a journal or uh, a chapter in a book or, or, or a book, uh, this can be understood differently because uh, an article should, in principle, be entirely, <clears throat> I mean, innovative research and new research. But, uh, for example, in, a, in, a, in writing a book, we can reuse and reshape uh, works that have been published elsewhere and, of course, give them a new context and a new, 
a new density by putting together and, and converging, uh, I mean, works that can be, have been published previously in different languages, in our own languages, in English or other languages, and then, I mean, make, make the whole in a different language. Now, of course, to in, in involve in this, the translators, which who are, of course, a very important community, translators that are themselves researchers and do not translate as, as a professional way of living, but also the translators that live on making translation. Of course, now we can make auto translation quite, quite easily, but when it comes to publish a translation, of course, we, we will only need the work of translators of uh, and of have their expertise and their input in doing this. So um, those would be globally the recommendations that on which we are working and would like to promote in order to, of course, uh, have uh, this, uh, I mean, to, to put into practice this idea at operas. So bringing the concept to life, we'd like to develop the concept, I mean, in one of our future projects to, to which we, we have called I mean, not definitely the goal net, I mean, the global open access language network. And this, in a certain way, gives, um, I mean, um, a, a, a pictorial idea of what we would like to put into practice. And, well, on my part, that would be all. Thank you very much for your attention. And, of course, I will be ready to uh, answer any questions if that you are there any to, you'd like to ask.